I'm going to be talking about the future of fast inference today. Imagine we're in Gen Chem or something. There's building blocks before we get to advanced material. So these are all things that you'll need to know. First, what are large language models? You've probably all used these, such as ChatGPT. Google has Gemini. There's plenty of other examples like Meta's Llama. These are AI models trained on large amounts of data to give a function that we would desire, such as summarization, making machine learning predictions, anything of that extent. What are tokens? Tokens are machine readable language. So English would get converted into tokens for a large language model to be able to process it. And tokenization is that process of encoding text and decoding text. How big is a token? A token is roughly three to four characters in English. So like a small word and then read limits. These are important. So this is essentially saying how often can I query a large language model before I get cut off? essentially put in timeout. And so there, there are penalties for this, but knowing what rate limits you have, a typical amount might be 30 per minute. And that's hard to exhaust unless you're manually typing into the chat GPT, that'd be pretty hard to do. But if you're programming, then you can hit that pretty fast. And so knowing your rate limits and programming around them or being able to buy a higher subscription can enable your performance to get boosted. And then context windows, this is essentially the amount of input and output tokens that you can send into one query response of a large language model. And leaders in this is Google's Gemini, which is one to two million tokens, as well as a new Chinese model called Minimax. And Grok is not far behind with a million tokens. A typical amount of context window would be 32,000 to 128,000 roughly, which is many pages. And here's a, a ranking of the top context windows by companies. So like I said, there's Minimax, which is 4 million tokens, which is massive. That could be equivalent to roughly 40,000 pages, which would be probably like five feet high of books if we were to stack it from the floor. And then Google's strongly represented there as well as Grok and others. All right, another term, what is inference? Inference is essentially using a pre-trained large language model for query and response. So asking ChatGPT any question and getting a response from the model would be inference. And so my talk's about fast inference, so not just asking it, getting a response at any rate, but getting it quickly. That's what I care about. And in terms of speed benchmarks, Cerebrus is a up and coming chip company. They have 2,500 tokens per second, which is extremely fast. It's almost instant response. An entire page of text will get generated and it's too fast to read. You'll see streaming, which might be 30 tokens a second, where the sentences are coming in slowly. 2,500 is just like, bam. Grok is second place with 1,600 tokens per second, which is also very fast, and then it tapers off a lot. So large language model limits. This applies to the context windows. Typically, you'll see if you're trying to summarize something massive and you upload it into the add and upload file, you'll see an error. So file is larger than 100 megabytes, you can't do anything. Over here, file upload failed, the file's too large. And I personally hate limits, especially when it applies to computing. So my goal is to get around this. And the last building block of the intro to AI machine learning is the large language model hardware. What do these large language models actually run on? NVIDIA's GPUs, you've probably heard about that. They were the most valuable company in the world, or still are, usually one and two with Apple. These power most of machine learning applications, and it can do training, inference, the entire stack. Google developed its own tensor processing unit, which is used to run their models. Grok developed a language processing unit in LPU specifically for large language models, so a chip dedicated to this. And then Cerebrus developed a wafer scale engine. So this is what a GPU looks like. This is the, I believe the H200, the H100 costs a lot, but extremely valuable in terms of performance. And this will have 14,500 cores, all of which do simple tasks, but it can do it at the same time in parallel. So for doing applications like matrix multiply, which is the basis of a lot of computation, it's almost like a general purpose device for machine learning, but it excels in those fields when optimized. This is Grok's language processing unit, and this looks different than most other architectures because it's dedicated to large language models, specifically being very fast at that, and that's what it looks like on the chip. This is Google's tensor processing unit, and then this right here is the size of a dinner plate. 
the wafer scale engine. It's eight and a half by eight and a half inches, and it's 900,000 cores. So the NVIDIA GPU, which is typically sold out, is 14,500 cores. This is 900,000, and it's made up of 84 individual dies with 10,700 cores each connected with copper wires. And so there's nothing really like this on the market. And hence, like, this is why the inference is so fast at 2,500 tokens per second. So wouldn't it be nice to get large context windows and fast inference instead of having trade-offs or neither? I took algorithms and this is a diagram of merge sort. And so essentially you have an array, you divide it up and conquer to sort the elements in the array. And this bottom part inspired me because it looks like a funnel. And I'm, how could I use that to make summarization and unlimited context windows possible? And so this is the basic building blocks of a funnel. Do you guys understand how this could lead to unlimited context windows? I wouldn't expect you to in 10 seconds. But if we create it into a system where the funnels are interlinking with each other, we can theoretically expand to unlimited size. There's no limits there. This is all like somewhat abstract. You guys have probably heard of the JFK files. What's the summary? Did the CIA do it? Did they not? <laughs> I'm not going to get into conspiracy and, and all that. But a lot of other people, when they heard that I was playing with it, they're like, what are like takeaways? And this is roughly four gigabytes of text, 80,000 pages, which is 10 feet tall. Part two is what I worked on for summarizing. And that's 4 million tokens, which was the top of the context windows as we looked at that chart. And can any large language model handle 4 million tokens? In short, no, not, not if you just try to upload it to the large language model. This is the Chinese model Minimax, and it took over five minutes and it was still processing. It didn't give me a too big limit, but it did give me a content warning, and it took a very slow amount of time trying to summarize it. This is Google's Gemini Flash 2.0, which can take in a million tokens, but four million is too big, even for Google Gemini. For a summary, do we need every single block of text? The correct way to do this, in my opinion, is to take your massive file and chunk it up into different pieces and then you can feed in these building blocks into the context windows and then use the funnel system to eventually get a single summary. Do you need 256 blocks to understand what the text is talking about? Probably not. And so with log2 chunking, this is taking log2 of 256, the total amount of chunks that we need a summary of and giving me eight. And so I would just select these eight and do a, a funnel system on that like this. So I would take every 30 second version, allocate it by indexing to zero through seven, and then stick it into the funnel and summarize that. My concern is that only doing one out of every 32 chunks is not going to be accurate enough. And so I also came up with square root chunking. This would be 16 chunks out of two 56 for one out of every 16. And so that was a little better in terms of accuracy. And this is what this would look like. Here's the exciting part you've all been waiting for. So my goal is to summarize the JFK files part two as fast as possible. So the first part, what's happening right now, it's fairly slow. It's tokenizing. So it's essentially encoding all the English language into large language model tokens so it can process that. And it's dividing into chunks, so the large language model can process that. And it's done. So this right here is the summary of 4 million tokens, or roughly 40,000 pages. And the actual summary part happened in 4 to 5 seconds. So that's what I would call fast inference. You guys can look at the slides later if you're interested, but this is the summary if we don't skip any chunks of part two. This is roughly 500 tokens and it talks about the CIA and I'll glance over the details. Doing the square root chunking method, so one out of every 16 chunks, this is the summary. It's not as accurate, I guess, as we would expect, but it still delivers largely what's going on. And maybe a more accurate version would be doing two times the square root. So I'd have one out of every eight chunks, for example, that might give me a much better summary and be fast. So do we solve both limits? The unlimited context window, the size, yes, it can handle any amount of input as I showed through the funnels. And then for speed, was it fast? Do you guys like it? So I'd say this algorithm pretty much solved it. Next bottlenecks, because it looked great, but there will be future issues that I encounter 
if we scale up and try to do absolutely massive 10 gigabyte text or something. Tokenization, that was the slowest part by far of the demo. It took roughly 18 seconds out of 23. So if I could do that faster, that would be a game changer. And I didn't look into optimizing this yet, but I certainly could do that for future work. Memory. So I use Python and Python is unlimited in terms of how much memory it can use. And that's RAM like working memory on your computer. But eventually you'll run into system limits, even if you have a data center to be able to do this. So in that case, you could do a sliding window technique where you're not trying to do everything in memory at the same time, but you write some to disk and then carry on or a database. And that would be one way to get around memory limits, which we might face eventually. And then rate limits. That's the amount of times you can query quickly, query response for the large language models. If you were to have the hardware in your own data center, you wouldn't have to pay anyone for rate limits because rate limits are going through an API. You're asking someone else to use their technology, usually for a subscription fee if it's a high rate limit. If you own the technology yourself, the hardware, then you wouldn't have to deal with rate limits. Also, if you're willing to pay a decent fee, you can get very high rate limits. So those are ways around that. Professions that might benefit most from this fast inference and unlimited context window. First, I would think trading, because if you have an information and speed edge, that could be worth a lot of money. Wall Street invests tons of money into this for high frequency trading. Legal, they just have to go through tons of documents and that's very tedious. So knowing quickly what this document's about could help. And this can be taken beyond just summarization. It could be used to extract key details as well. And then Congress, they're expected to read thousands of pages, come up with amendments. It seems very overwhelming. I didn't go into that field for a reason. I'm way more interested in this stuff. Those fields can certainly benefit as well as AI agents, which are really coming alive on the internet. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Cerebris. I'm a fellow over there. And so they gave me very boosted rate limits for this demo. I hope you liked it.